Welcome to Shooting Spaces, a podcast about real estate photography, design, all kinds of photography, building structure related. I'm Rich Baum, your host from California. Joining me today is Brian Berkowitz here from New York. 100 episodes, what is it, 180 episodes in, and today you decide to change up your open. <laughs> you know what? Randomly, out of out, nowhere. I'm going out in style, baby. Going out in style. Exactly. Going style. Three left, and you decide, hey, I'm going to change my open tonight and just uh, improvise. Well, well done, Rich. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you got to take it when you can. That How must you doing, be, Brian? That must, that must up, be your buddy? That must be your pain meds talking after your surgery. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. No. What's going on? How you been? Not much. Summer's over. Back to the the swing of things. Things are going well. Fall's picking up for me, so I'm doing a bit of traveling. I had no traveling this summer, but I'm uh, picking up again. Starting to travel. Going to Canada, actually, Matthew. Not, not Toronto. Toronto, Toronto no, no, no. Canada? I'm going to Calgary, actually. So, oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, pretty far trip, um, which yeah. is a pain in the ass to get to from New York. Um, but it is what it is, and um, that's who do we it. know in Calgary? I don't know. I mean, somebody. Brandon, I guess, isn't too far Brand- from Calgary, wow. relatively speaking, to the rest of the geography he's of North America. Us. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's kind of in between Toronto and and there, but uh, he would he would definitely be closer than I am. That's for sure. So. Yeah. It's all right. Though. I'm only going to Calgary oh, for uh, for literally a night, and I actually have a lot of family there, so it'll be nice to go out to dinner and see them for a night. Good, good, good. What about you, Rich? It's uh, it's been slow for you this month, obviously, but uh, yeah, I good. had a shoulder replacement a month ago today, and uh, I'm doing great. Starting PT, formal PT, a month. I mean, uh, Monday or Tuesday? No, Monday. And uh, gonna recoup, go down to Baja. Uh, start doing some shooting and living down there until time is up. And uh, I'm, I'm going to start shooting in about uh, about a week, I think. So I'm uh, having someone help me and going to just go out there and do it. So, yeah. All right, cool. So Let's before we uh, before we get into it and introduce our guest who's been with us a few times before, like always, let's uh, get a quick word in from our sponsors, HD Photo Hub. HD Photo Hub is the complete solution for any photography business that needs a professional white label platform that automates payment collection, scheduling, and photo delivery all without monthly contracts or fees. HD Photo Hub is all about your business and your brand. They don't put their logo on any of your order forms or sites, and they even integrate with the email services and automation tools you are already using today. Hey, they even have live customer support to help you get started. Visit hdphotohub.com and sign up for a free one-on-one demo or live webinar to learn more. All right. Thank you, HD Photo Hub. And um, I'd like to introduce our guest today. We're going uh, with one guest today for this episode. And I was actually looking up before. You've been on the show three prior times. So this is uh, this is your fourth time. So that's pretty exciting. Um, fourth, and, fourth and final because um, we're... we're uh, down to our third to last episodes where we're, we're just about there and uh it's uh, it's good to have you on for our third to last our last two episodes are gonna be pretty exciting rich and i have some good plans for those and and you're gonna be our last uh solo guest so it's pretty exciting wow <laughs> but, i am uh, honored thank yes. you guys yeah but, I mean, you guys matthew are... uh, well let me introduce you matthew yeah. stallone from stallone media out of toronto area um and i was looking the last show you were on with us was september 7th 2021 so it's been just about two years since you were last on the show you've been on the show in 2020 and 2019 also um so you've been on the show a few times um but um welcome back yeah thanks for having me back guys it's uh it's a privilege and an honor to to be with you guys again and i'm i must say i'm i'm sad in the fact that it's the last but you know it's uh it's something that you guys have done a long time i, I must commend you guys what you've done and, and for how long you've been doing it. it's been great especially for our industry to have something like this where you can learn from a lot of other people and bring on a lot of other guests so congratulations on how many you've done and uh you know maybe there'll be a, a something similar in the future that you guys will think about maybe not yeah we're going to be doing some stuff we haven't figured out exactly uh the way we're going to do it and what we're going to do but whether it's webinars or some other stuff i know we did a webinar together a couple years back also um but we'll figure we'll figure something out we're, we're not uh we're not dropping off the face of this earth um and i know rich rich has big plans for for next year to start bringing his youtube channel back and and go hardcore so this is a great subject for me because i'm really thinking 2024 is a big year for me uh plans i've got for the educational aspect of what i do 
kind of not necessarily completely phasing out the physical photography end, but um, really working back on my YouTube channel and getting that that going again and and spiffing it up, making it new and Instagram so different now and TikTok and all those things. So yeah, I use all those platforms. Yeah. So, so back in 2021, um, we were talking and that was literally, um, I mentioned to you before, that was kind of like a few weeks after Instagram just introduced reels. And, um, the reason we wanted to have you on is because, um, I think as we've had you on in the past, um, you know, you're, you're a Titan of social media in our industry, as far as real estate photographers, um, you built a hell of a following on Instagram. Um, I'm not really sure what, what your deal is with TikTok cause I don't really go on there, but I'm assuming it's pretty hefty too. And the same thing with yeah. YouTube. And not only have you, have you learned to do that, but you have also learned to leverage those followers um, to make it a revenue source for your business. So that being said, um, in 2021, we were talking and you reels were first coming out. And I remember, I remember this like almost uh, so vividly where you were like, get on reels, get on reels. You were telling everybody to get on reels. Um, so now, um, looking back two years later, and we all know Instagram has changed so much in the last two years, even the last yeah. few weeks, literally it's changing so yeah. significantly. Um, you know, looking back now, um, you pushing reels, 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 I mean, did it pay off? Does that still hold true? Did, did it make sense? It was that a waste of time. Uh, like, well, I mean, look at Instagram now. It's it's like I was saying earlier, and when we were talking, I mean, you can pretty much call it videograms, right? Because it's just mostly videos now than it is photos. By the way, just um, just say your social handle. Your so if people want to kind of check you out while they're listening. Uh, so at Stallone Media, so S T A L L O N E Media. Um, we're on Instagram. You can find us on TikTok as well under Stallone Media. Um, yeah, I, I mean, when we were talking about 2021 and Instagram kind of uh, started changing, they put reels out. At the beginning, it was short. It was like 15 seconds only. Mm -hmm. Then from 15 seconds, you're like, you know, what what am I going to put out there? That's 15 seconds that gets people's attention. Um, then they change it to 30 seconds and they change it to 60 seconds. And now they've changed it to 90 seconds. So they're making them longer and longer. But when I was driving home, like get on reels was because we had some videos that started going viral and instantly our followers started growing so fast. Um, we started getting some more, um, um, comments, more shares. There's just a lot more interaction going on with our reels than with our photos. So we kind of started pushing more reels than photos. Um, and you know, when it started getting to a point where we're like, you know, going up, I don't know, I'm gonna say like 2000 to 3000 every week in followers. It, it was one of those things I just started shouting out to everybody, like get on reels, don't wait. Um, you know, start doing your behind the scenes, involve your clients. You don't have to make videos per se of like a cool house tour reel but do anything you, you can with reels to kind of get that engagement. So I think with me, it was, I usually involve my clients. Uh, I get them to interact or do the behind the scenes or, you know, tell me a little bit about the house or whatever the case is. Um, I definitely share a lot of the behind the scenes stuff of what we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, so that was creating content and overall it, 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 you know, it drove people to say, Hey, why should I follow this guy? And it's because I was providing some information. Um, usually we're going to follow people that are going to provide us information or they do really good work, one or the other. So, um, you know, but from that, it, it allowed us to not only just leverage more followers because followers are great, but if you don't have engagement it really doesn't mean as much because you're going to always have followers and they kind of, you know, they drop off. You're going to find some that, you know, interact with you. Some don't, and that's fine. But the interactions that we were getting were actually helping the sales of some of the properties from our clients. So that's when the light bulb really went off and it was like, holy shit, like we're actually creating videos of, you know, here we are at this location. And back in 2021, I'm sure it wasn't the same for you guys in the States. You can even literally put a photo up with your phone and, and the house was sold. I mean, it was just that crazy. So if I'm at a property, I was like, Hey guys, I'm at this location, check out the front of it. And I'm with, you know, so-and-so instantly the agent would get, and for DM and he'd be like, Hey, where's this property? I have someone who's looking, give me some information. So we were giving people an avenue to get inside kind of firsthand look of things that were going up for sale. And the biggest one was, um, Shanty Bay, which was a, a big $18 million property. 
that we shot and we did a live like i usually go on with my live for my packages and one of our or one of my followers who is a real estate agent dm me right away so after i finished the live and he's like hey can you get me in contact with the agent because i have someone who's interested now as you guys know selling an 18 million dollar home isn't easy to do so instantly i gave that information and the client was right my agent my client was right beside him i said this is this client he's looking for him and next thing you know within a week they had a somebody coming over to look at the property. They had a second showing again. And within a month, they sold this property through our Instagram. So that story was shared. That agent told other agents. Next thing you know, we've obviously posted it on our social media. And it became another property came up that was like 4 million. And we sold it through Instagram. And then another property came up and it was like 12 or no, sorry, another $17 million property that was on the market for like a year. And it sold through Instagram as well. So we leveraged that power of having the ability to get out to the masses to actually bring in buyers for these properties. And the agents love that. Um, and that's where I was able to monetize it. That's where I was like, you know what? There's obviously value in this. So I should start charging for it. And that's ultimately what I've done now in order for me to go out to a certain shoot, I'll charge more money. Um, in order for me to actually do some type of live or session or something, I'll actually add more. You mean for you, for you personally it. versus one of your, for me personally, for one of my team. Yeah. yeah. So my sis, my breakdown was, you know, let's say I charged a thousand dollars to do a shoot. Well, now I changed that price and I went up to $1,500 because the extra $500 for me to come out was not only experience, but also the fact that I'm leveraging my social media platform to help you sell the house. And I have a track record and proof behind it that would warrant the fact that I can actually start charging to monetize my channels, my social media channels. Um, yeah, so it's been great. Now, pretty much anytime you see me on social media, it's because I'm, I was paid extra to be on there and I will leverage to get that property out there. Um, and TikTok was kind of the same thing. TikTok started blowing up. We uh, started putting some videos out there and I think we're at 116,000 followers on TikTok. Uh, we're at 172,000 on Instagram, um, YouTube, we're, our YouTube channels up to about 10,000 now. So they're all building and they're all helping trying to have some type of revenue stream. We don't charge for TikTok, but we kind of automatically include it. So if you're on our Instagram, you're going to be on our TikTok as well. Matthew, uh, let me do this not only for myself, but for yeah. people out there that may not really do a lot of Instagram. I mean, I'm pretty familiar with Instagram, but the, the reels you're talking about, is that what's up at the top that goes away every day or where are the reels? Those are uh, stories. So those, those are your are stories. stories. Yeah. Okay. So what's on and the top the, will show what is the reel? Stories. Tell us what a reel is. Well, the reel is basically a short form video format. So it will show up just like on your regular feed, it'll show a square that's on there. And that regular feed is either a post, a picture, or it's a video. So if you click on it, it'll show that it's a video. What's cool about Reels is you can actually pin your favorite videos at the very top. So when they go in to look at your video feeds, whatever you pin at the top is what they're going to see first, and then they can watch it. Now with Reels, mm -hmm. it takes you from one Reel to your next Reel. to As long as you stay on it, you can keep watching all of the Reels. So what I did okay. was our, our popular Reels that blew up, I left them as my three pinned items on the top. So I have one that's 15 million views. I have another one that is... 4 million views and another one that I think was 3.7 million views. So those are my three top pins. And again, when people come to the platform to look at it, they're going to be like, wow, this guy has a lot of views. You know, we should be leveraging him to help us use. And then it kind of goes down from there. So you have different views, you know, a million, 200,000, 300,000, 30,000. Sometimes it's only 5,000. Um, the thing with reels is the property really makes a big difference. Obviously, if something's really gorgeous, you got a really good looking house, um, it's going to go, but you have to get the right music at the same time. Um, music helps trending, um, that, sorry, music that is trending really helps get your reels go a little bit more viral. Um, well, I was about to ask you that. So, so yeah. I know Instagram makes suggestions for you. Is, is yeah. it best practice to use their suggestions? Are they trying to push this? So you want to use there versus, you know, a lot of times when I used to start reels, I would always like search for a song that kind of fit that you like. either that I liked or that like fit what I was shooting. So like, let's right. say hypothetically I was in Florida posting a reel. I'd like, uh, I'd, I'd search for a song that had the word sun in it and, and you know, stuff yeah. like this, some stupid cheesy crap like that. Um, yeah. but am I better off just going with an, like a suggestion because they're trying to push that song to us. So use that song 
Well, the suggestions that they're pushing is generally what is trending. So they'll show you kind of the popular songs that a lot of people are using. Now, there's one point before Instagram did a, an upgrade. And it depends if you're on because you have three different types. You have professional, creator, and personal accounts. So I'm not sure which one you guys are on. But I would highly recommend that you get on the creator account because a creator account, usually they push things out there a lot faster for the creator accounts versus professional or personal. So for yeah, example, if you're on a personal, if you're on professional, you actually won't have certain songs that are really popular. You can search for it all you want. It, it actually won't even come up. So being on a creator account allows you to get a lot different and better songs that are um, kind of more trending. So I, t I usually tell everybody get onto a creator account first before you get onto um, a professional or a, a personal, definitely not personal. It's got to at least be business or creator. Yeah, I'm trying to. And look how for do it. you uh, get your follower? How do you publish or promote that to the your existing followers or have future followers? So you well, Creative just changing account. your account profile on Instagram. It, you don't have to do anything. Once you go into same Instagram, man, you're going to change everything. that. Yeah, everything's okay. pretty much the same. You're mm -hmm. just going to go in right. and you're going to actually change your account. Um, it just will allow different features and options that pop up. Mm hmm. So people can find your work to see examples of it. Like after this, I'm going to get online and start trying to figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. Where's another good place for two things to see? Are there any people that come up to mind that are super big on, on this whole thing you're talking about that you can say, go check out so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so and, and also is there a, uh, what's the best way to learn uh, to, to not only technically how to do it, where to get the ideas, where to get the creatives. Cause sometimes if I see somebody else's, I can go, Oh, I understand it. I can do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the good things about being on reels is based on your network per se, as let's say photographers, your network itself. Well, I, Instagram will actually recommend people to, to go and view and watch because they they're in their network or they're following somebody that you follow or because you're a photographer and they're kind of, you know, under that photographer category, they're going to show up on your feed as a suggestion of somebody that you should go watch or look at. Um, and when you're looking at reels, you can actually look at anybody's reel. You don't have to be following them. If you find that's a, you know, there's a really good reel and you're like, you know, this guy's really talented, or I like the fact that he shows behind the, the, the behind the scenes, you're going to want to follow him and you're going to go look at it. So, um, you know, there's so many of them out there. Uh, it's really tough to kind of pinpoint one, Mm -hmm. or two or even five because there's just start so doing many... a search for it you know trying to get yeah I mean, and literally that's really what it is if you do a search in instagram you know you put a photographer or a videographer you're going to be you're going to find lots of stuff and there's a lot of people that actually give tips and suggestions on how to make reels and they show you the behind the scenes on how to do it um so there's a lot of content creators teachers if you will that show you how to use it I think one of the biggest things that I took advantage of too with instagram is I had the guide feature and guides are basically like a little mini book series or, or blogs, if you will. And I teach on there how to, you know, how to post, how to use hashtags, how to use CapCut, how to use different softwares. So I made little short guides on my Instagram. People can click on there. It's free. And you can pretty much follow and get all the uh, things that I've learned that I'm sharing back with everybody else. Um, you know, the other thing that I added now, and this was again, because of Instagram is I have a subscribe feature on my Instagram and for as little as two ninety nine, sorry, seven ninety nine a month. If you follow me, I will give kind of um, non public videos on behind the scenes of how to do certain things. Because you are a subscriber, you'll get some, you know, certain tips and secrets, as you will, or the secret sauce, as Rich calls it, of how to shoot certain things. And those will only go to my subscribers. They won't go out to the public because they're paying me a subscription fee every month to kind of see that stuff. Almost like Patreon um, type of deal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's another way of leveraging your Instagram as well is by using the subscribe feature. And, you know, Rich, that's something that you should definitely look at because with a subscribe feature, it's kind of just like YouTube, but with the subscribe features, you're going to be able to sell information um, to these people that give you monthly subscription. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you, because you mentioned CapCut. So... Do you, I mean, I, I'm assuming you use it because you mentioned it. Um, do you put together all your reels in a third party app or do you do it all now natively through Instagram now? Or does Instagram 
Um, do the algorithms promote you better if you use their native um, stuff? Is there any science to that, or there, is there, that beyond your great, knowledge? Or no, that's actually from experience. That's a great question, and the answer is um, so. TikTok, sorry, CapCut um, and TikTok, from what I understand, are basically in the same corporation, if you will. Um, and if you run if you run CapCut, you'll notice that they link up with TikTok really well. They'll actually be able to get you music that's on TikTok and put it onto Instagram, uh, sorry, put it onto your cap cut and then upload it to TikTok automatically. Um, and they made it really, really user-friendly for TikTok users. Now, if you're trying to use cap cut for anything else, you can, it's not a problem. It's just not as user-friendly um, with Instagram like it is with TikTok. So we use cap cut, we use final cut, we use premiere, we use uh, Mojo. I mean, there's all kinds of apps that are out there that we use we can't really say that one does a better job than the other. There's just some apps that have some really cool features that we use it for. For example, you can throw in a whole bunch of videos and then have CapCut auto cut it for you based on the music. And it will automatically edit it for you or chop it all up. And then you can go in and kind of maybe, you know, you want to change a certain frame from what it picked out of that video. You can go back and just change that one. But it just makes it a lot faster and easier. Mm -hmm. Um, they have some pretty cool templates now, which is really good. So the templates are a really great feature because, you know, someone like Rich, you're not on Instagram a lot and you don't want to spend a lot of time learning this. So the easiest way is to actually use one of the templates and it's literally like drag and drop. You just pick your pictures, pick your videos, stick it in there and it'll automatically cut everything for you based on the music. Um, so, you know, the Mojo does it. Um, now, you know, the other thing too is with uh, the captions, right? You, you see a lot of times you see those videos with the captions and the text based on what you're saying, those are really easy to do now because it can automatically generate captions from your voice. Whereas before you literally, had, it, was a, it was a nightmare to do captions before, but now it's a lot easier. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many great And that's great a great thing because if, if you're in an uncomfortable situation, you don't want to have to hear it. You right. can read you it. You can read it, yeah. And believe it or not, so one of the questions, Brian, you asked is, is there a difference from using Instagram uh, software, the program? Yes. It, it, there was a time when actually using Instagram made our reels a lot more viral versus uploading something from CapCut. Um, I still find today that there's, they've made it better. They've made their editing software portion of it a lot better now. Um, not as good as TikTok, but it's getting there. And I think one of the best things was there is a little bit more engagement when you're using the software from within Instagram. So um, if you can do that, do it. And I know Instagram does have templates as well now as, so you can use the templates that are built into that. So that makes it a lot better. And whether it's photos or video photos and put it into a slideshow, they can do some really cool effects. Um, but you know, I find with any video, the cooler, the more, you know, wow factor, if you will, um, it gets people's attention. And there's that three seconds of a hook. You need to hook them in right away. And our biggest hooks for our videos, if you've seen some of them, is the FPV, when the drone's actually flying through the house. It's just one of those things that have always, always done really well for us. The FPV reels just go viral all the time for us. There hasn't been one FPV reel that we've done that really hasn't gone viral. Um, it's just so cool to watch. That's really what it is. You hear that, real estate photographers? Get an FPV drone. <laughs> what drone, well, you know, what drone are you using for inside a house? So we have two of them. Um, so we have one that's from GepRC. It's a, a 25. It's a little, little mini small one. Um, then we have the DJI Avada, which is the latest one that just came out. Um, Andrew, my, my main guy, he, my media manager, he pretty much flies the GepRC 25. He does most of our FPV stuff. The Avada is something that I use just because I'm not as, you know, getting older now. I'm not, uh, I'm, let's just say it's not as steady, <laughs> but with the DJI Avada, it has the, you know, the ability to auto hover. So it makes it really easy. And my buddy, Nick out in um, California, who actually does a lot of shoots for a lot of the guys that you see on like selling sunset and a lot of Netflix shows and stuff like that, or really big famous builders that are out there. He's doing some work out there for them. He reached out to me. He's like, Hey Matt, which, which, you know, drone do you recommend? What are you using? And I gave him the heads up on using the DJI Avada. And he started learning how to fly. And then, you know, I gave him some help with how to put the GoPro on there. And the guy's doing some awesome flights right now. And he's flying through some, you know, houses. And we message each other all the time. I'm honestly looking forward to coming out to California one day and, and just basically work on one of these properties. Yeah. yeah so there's I live another about, one, yeah. Uh, 45 minutes from, from Nick. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, there you go. We've worked together many times. So, you know, there's... 
that's just one of the, again, how do you do something different for us as a business? We found FPV as one of those ways of doing something different. Um, so we started getting involved in it again. I, Brian, I've said this to you. We've preached about it so many times. You could be a photographer and that's your niche and that's what you want to go for. That's, that's great. That's what you're going to do. If you want to become a media company, especially when it comes to real estate photography, real estate photography, there's hundreds of thousands of photographers that are out there and there's millions of realtors that are going to find the right match for the price of what they're going to pay. And again, you know, you can have a, uh, an A-class photographer and a C-class photographer, real estate, you're going to find something that's in the middle. But if you want to be a media company, you need to be able to provide reels, videos, drone, uh, twilights, twilight videos. You know, just you have to do a lot more, especially with these agents, just continue to want more and more and more. Agent cool. intros. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. lots of stuff. Yeah, and every little piece that they ask for, you just add more money to your bill. So your bill from, you know, used to be $250, $300 for a photo shoot. Mine are like two, $3,000 now because by the time it's all done and said, it's a full blown package. My biggest package right now is a Rambo shoot, which is 3,500 bucks for me to go out there. You call it the Rambo um, shoot? We call it the Rambo shoot, which aren't, is where they're all, the your whole day. All, aren't all your packages uh, Sylvester Stallone related? Yeah, they're all Stallone related. Got to keep it uh, the theme. Exactly. It's all, it's all about your branding, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, cool. Um, let's take a quick one minute break and hear a quick word from our friends at iGuide and then we'll be back with it in a second. Are you looking to expand your real estate photography business? Stand out from the crowd by offering 3D tours, accurate room measurements, square footage calculations, and professionally drafted floor plans, all from the click of a button with the state-of-the-art iGuide camera system. Get your first five standard iGuides up to 3,000 square feet free by adding the code shooting spaces in the referral section at camera purchase. Visit goiguide.com to learn more. Well, thank you for that one, guys. Again, we've had the best sponsors. We, uh, you know, we've had the same sponsors for three years. And that's a really good working relationship there. So, um, Matthew, thank you so yes. much for this insight. But uh, besides Instagram, I mean, we could continue talking about that a lot, and I'll probably be bugging you. Hey, what the heck is this, Matthew? What is but. Uh, <laughs> What else is there out there that is is uh, you know TikTok? What what's going on? What what else is is viable? Yeah. Worth spending your time. You know TikTok when it first came out was all about dancing, right? How to dance, how to how to do these funny little things, and everyone was you know people in their thirties and forties were like, hey, what am I going to get on TikTok for? Who cares? And that kind of was like six seven months, and then after six seven months, all of a sudden t you know TikTok started becoming these cool cool videos that was not just about dancing. It was about making videos for real behind the scenes. It was exactly the same thing, but they were ahead of the curve when it came to reels and making videos. They just blew, um, uh, you know, it blew them out of the water uh, in terms of Instagram and what, what they thought um, it needed to be. So that's why Instagram really changed their platform, excuse me. And they went to try to compete with, TikTok because TikTok was blowing them out of the water when it came to reels and videos. So you're going to see a lot of uh, upcoming features. What's funny actually is the guy from Instagram himself is on TikTok and he shares all of Instagram's tips and examples of what they're doing. Why would you, why would Instagram go on TikTok? Well, he probably has quite an audience on TikTok too. So you go, you go everywhere your audience is. Absolutely. So yeah. I mean, YouTube, you know, YouTube is also another thing. YouTube is one of the ones where obviously rich, you know, um, try to get videos out on YouTube is more of a uh, residual income, you know, getting videos for us, house tour videos and getting to go, you know, you look like a guy like, uh, Enos, who's doing an awesome job on YouTube. Um, he does a whole presentation of the houses and, and he's blowing up, obviously does all kinds of awesome houses around the world. Yeah, his channels he's insane. Making a I was looking yeah, at his I channel mean, yesterday by uh, coincidentally, um, his videos are like 35 million, 40 million. It's insane. Yeah. Who is yeah. this now? Enos? Uh, Enos, Enos, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Yeah, he's Murr. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's based I out of LA. Enos, yeah, Yul, Yul Mazer, Yul Mauser. Um, how do you spell his first name? E-N-E-S. E-N-E-S. Um, but if you look at him on YouTube, uh, you know, he's, I think he's past a million followers now, but his videos are just... 
And, and, and kudos, I mean, I have to give his team a hell of a lot of credit because their videos have just really elevated. 3.45 um, million subscribers to his YouTube channel. There you go. So, and I know for a fact because, um, you know, he actually did videos and he does some of them. Um, if the house is cool enough, he'll come out and do it without even charging because he'll make money off of the actual income through YouTube. So... Um, I know now he's starting to charge a fee to come out and, and shoot something and it has to match his criteria. I mean, I don't want to speak for him. He, he, his, his, his team just does a fantastic job with the videos. So, um, and he's making a, you know, a killing off of YouTube. I mean, if you just look at, you can do a search, uh, on YouTubers to figure out who's making what and get a rough ballpark. Um, the guy's killing it and con you know, congratulations to him and kudos. He's doing a great job. And now YouTube has the good shorts. Coffee, good coffee money for me for the last yeah. 15 years. <laughs> great yeah there you go yeah well i mean you know rich the more video you put out there the more walk time you get you're going to make more money and, and for all of us you know including myself you know i started doing tips and all that other stuff as well but it just takes up so much time um this this you know this guy and a lot of other youtubes are like i don't care i'm going to focus on just making youtube videos and yeah. that's where my income source is going to be from um yeah so yeah, but I don't know. I don't know much of his background, for instance, personally. But I, I mean, I don't think he was a real estate photographer prior to this. He's more of a host, no. is he not? Yeah, I mean, there's a video that's out. If you go on his channel, he actually talks about how he started and what he did. He, he was into construction. He knows a lot. That's why when he talks in his video, he knows a lot about construction. Um, and he then went into media with uh, with Mike, the media guy, and they were doing videos and stuff. He's like, hey, you know, it would be a cool idea if I go talk to some builders and architects and, and do videos for their house. And I'd be able to talk about it. And that's kind of how he all started into it. And now I think he's got a team of like 17 people. He's got like three or four editors. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's fantastic. You know, kudos for where he's at right now, what he's doing. I mean, he's doing yachts and he's planes and all kinds of stuff. RVs. I've seen a bunch of different yeah, stuff. Some yeah. of the RVs in there are crazy. <laughs> I hear, and now and I was saying before, YouTube now introduced shorts too, which I guess is similar to, yeah. um, not exactly the same, but yeah, exactly with the, with the reels trying to bring this yeah. short form video. Um, and most of the shorts that I see are all vertical format, mm -hmm. kind of just quarter off the phone, which I'm sure is quick upload too. So, yeah. um, I mean, when, another... you know, when it's, sorry, Brian, to, you just brought up a good point. So shorts, vertical format. You remember back in 2022 when I 21 when I was saying, guys, make reels, make reels. I literally made a bracket for my camera to go on a vertical format so that I can shoot it vertically. And it'd be like, you know, then agents were like, Well, I want I want a reel. I'm like, okay, well, I have to put the camera vertically in order to shoot it and get the whole top, you know, bottom of the of the house. And they're like, but I need a horizontal video too for MLS. No problem. Now it's an extra now go I just got videos. a new GoPro. GoPro, you can shoot in horizontal and it's in such resolution that you can, then the aspect ratio that you've got horizontal and verticals. Yeah. So Brian, that's a uh, rich, that's a good point because our actual FPVs, we use the GoPro bones version, which is strictly uh, the GoPro 11 and 12, and it will shoot everything in the eight by seven ratio. Oh. And we can then pick vertical or horizontal. So oh. our FPVs, that's what we're using. We're using the GoPro 11. Yeah. And the uh, the Mini Pro Four, the mm -hmm. the lens will the camera will turn sideways automatically, or yeah, mechanically. It's pretty yeah. cool. Well, it shows how to, important you're, you're it good. is. Yeah. yeah. Well, and again, you know, GoPro really realized, especially like Insta Insta three hundred and sixty is a really great camera. The quality isn't as good as GoPro, but the Insta Go two was a really like it's like like a peanut sized little camera, um, and they shot in a circle format, and then you can pick either vertical or horizontal. And that's what we were using for almost six months because it was just so lightweight and so convenient and it stabilized everything for you. Um, but now with the GoPro 11, the 10 bit color and everything was just so much better that we switched over to the GoPro instantly. Well, I got the, I just got the 12 and I've just got a bunch of stuff, a cage for it and I'm all gearing up for starting to do videos with it. And so I'm kind of excited about that. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, no, and they're great. Honestly, with the 10 bit color, they're really good quality. Um, you know, a lot of our reels, believe it or not, are actually shot with our iPhone. Uh, the iPhone 12, sorry, I have the iPhone 13, but the the iPhone is just fantastic because the AI technology on the phones are able to bring in the views from the windows, right? And it balances everything out. You can't, we can't even get that with our Sonys. No, the um, dynamic range is insane on these phones. Oh, yeah, they're fantastic. I mean, you know, you're going into a shoot and people are paying you so much money and they see you with your phone. 
and they kind of like, you know, what are you doing with your phone? I'm like, do you like our videos? Yes. Okay. Well, this is what we're using because the AI technology that's behind it is given a such great dynamic range. That's why it looks, I guys, I can't tell you how many times I get DMS. What did you shoot that on? What camera are you using? What do you shoot? I'm like, guys, it's an iPhone. It's just the iPhone 13. That's all it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was the biggest thing. Most of our reels are all in, are all, uh, uh, iPhone related. I want to kind of revert back to just kind of plain old Instagram and your plain old posts and feeds because mm-hmm. we still do it. And, and I guess we all know that it doesn't have the same effect that it once did. And I remember years ago, we used to say, you got to post every day to build a following. But, you know, like you mentioned earlier at this point, following maybe doesn't really even matter anymore at this point. Um, you know, it's more about engagement, engagement. And, and exactly and all that type of stuff. But um, like what are generally good practices for just managing your Instagram account? I mean, is it good to post daily? I mean, I used to post daily for a while. I stopped. Um, now I'm posting like every one or two weeks because I honestly, I did not notice any difference in my engagement if I was posting daily or I was posting every two weeks. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, when you're posting every day, me personally, I feel like I was kind of just fishing for content and posting images that weren't even that good that I didn't want to mm-hmm. represent me just because I needed to post every day. Whereas right. now I'm posting once a week, every two weeks, but I'm really posting not an image, but maybe a full project, maybe six, seven images, but it, it's mm-hmm. a, it's a wider set of images that really embodies the type of work that I want to put out there in front of people. And I haven't noticed a significant amount of difference in the engagement I was getting. And look, I don't, I, I can't compare what I have to, to your 170,000 followers, but nevertheless, there hasn't been a big drop off for me. Okay. So the difference that you'll find is Instagram will actually push other your account to other accounts of you know you should go follow for like i was saying earlier on a suggested account um if you ever notice did you have did you ever post something and you notice a lot of comments or engagement in the comments and all of a sudden you're like wow i got like 30 comments on this one or you know i'm getting 40 comments on this one and that's because instagram pushed that content out to your followers so they actually see it when they log in a lot of times you can log into Instagram and you won't see my feed unless let's say you purposely put your notification on to make sure that you see my mm-hmm. feed. But if I don't post anything like three, four days and it's, and it's happened just cause we don't have content or cause I'm busy. Um, when we do go to post something, that spike is a lot slower versus when we put stuff out every day, the spike is so much faster because it Instagram will push it out to a lot of the people that are following you or potentially people that might want to follow you. And they'll show them your potential reels. And you notice the, the other biggest thing with Instagram, they have the explore page, right? And on your mm-hmm. explore page, if you're on that explore page, that's how you're going to get new followers. And people are like, I got to check that video out. If it's on the explore page, Instagram's recommending it. They push my algorithm to get noticed. We, we hit that Instagram algorithm on the explore page with that video that took 15 million views. And it was crazy. We went up like 30,000 followers in like a month. It was nuts. I remember when that, that, well, that was pretty early on when reels came out, was it not? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we caught that, we caught that wave, which was fantastic. Um, so to answer your question, Brian, the more, the more you put it out there, the more Instagram is going to put you in a higher category to get noticed and have your followers actually watch and engage your content instead of just kind of not, not showing up. I mean, sometimes I go on my Instagram and, and even Brian, I'll, I won't see something on yours. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I, you know, I went to Brian's on purpose. Let's say to look at something. I'm like, I didn't see this post. I didn't see this post. So yeah, but then once you, once you go lot, to my feed, I've noticed, then it starts pushing my feed back to you over the next several days. There you go. Exactly. So if I'm not on your feed a lot, that means it's not going to push your feed. So the more you put out there, the more people are engaging with your, your, posts or whatever it is that you're putting out there, the more you're going to show up in people's faces. But does that make a difference whether it's an actual um, feed post or reel or story? Like, cause like I said, I'm posting to my regular f- photograph feed yeah. every week or every two weeks, but I'm posting probably stories daily or, or every other day. So I'm pretty frequent as far as that's concerned and reels, I've maybe done 10 reels in my life. <laughs> so not very, not very often. Yeah. And, I, and I know I should be doing it. It's, it's, I just don't have time and don't have the patience and whatever. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Posts, posts honestly are dead. Like in terms of putting photos, if you go to my post, my Instagram feed, you'll see, I think the last 20 posts, only one of them is maybe photos. Everything is videos. Everything is just videos, reels. Um, we hardly do any posts anymore. Um, unless a client actually pays us and they're like, I want photos posted instead of a video, then I'll post the photos. Um, even my twilights, like I'll put one twilight or whatever that's out there, but I'll show the behind the scenes of how I made that twilight or do something kind of like a time lapse. Um, but again, it's a video, right? It goes back to a video. So if you're putting just photos out there, you're not going to get a lot of, you're not going to get a lot of followers, but that's not the, your intent. Your intent is maybe to get, you know, an architect or a designer or somebody to notice your work and be like, Hey, this guy does really good work. Um, and then they'll kind of want to follow you from that sense. So yeah, but let me ask you then on that, because, you know, you're a real estate photographer, you have a big team, you, you do volume, you do probably dozens of shoots a week. Yeah. Um, I don't really shoot real estate anymore, and I'm more retail right. architecture, interior design, and I do probably max two shoots a week, uh, right. maybe three on a, on a crazy week, but on average, yeah. one to two shoots a week. Um, so I just don't have physically as much content. I'm not on set as much as you. I'm not out there as much as you. So I just don't, don't have, ha but hold on. You don't have as much because you're not creating it. Could be. Because you can, you you can create tons of content. You can shoot a behind the scenes. You can show the process. You can show your computer screen. You can show you can your do multiple shoots from one shoot, multiple reels from one shoot. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I tell, like, so what I tell agents, it's like they have an opportunity to sell this house. They need to take advantage of that and create a lot of content with that listing. And if it's a really, really great listing, I, I tell like spend more money because this is your future marketing to get more business. Um, so for me, for example, Brian, you're, so you just mentioned something about you don't do real estate. I'm getting out of the real estate. I'm getting more into the interior design and the builders. Well, guess what, you know, has happened interior, uh, sorry. And in, um, a company that manufactures and makes kitchen cabinets and custom, you know, wall units and stuff like that. They reached out to me. They've been following me for a year. They're like, man, we love the content that you do. We want to be part of it. Can we do something on a monthly basis? Um, we want you to come shoot our kitchens for us. And I'd be like, yeah, great. No problem. So we came up with basically a monthly kind of plan that I'm going to come out and I'm going to shoot three to four of their projects of their finished projects. So it'll be more like an interior design shoot. And we're going to show the behind the scenes process on how to do it. And from that, it ended up getting, okay, could we also have you manage and, you know, do our social media for us? So now I created another revenue stream, which is, you know, basically pushing and managing their social media and also doing all their photo shoots. Now, when I do the photo shoots, me personally, I'm basically tagging them and saying, we're working with so-and-so, these are the shoots that are coming up. And they love that. And now we have another designer that's like, hey, I want that engagement. Hey, I want that business. I want eyes on my company here. So it ended up being now I did a builder shoot. I did another builder last week. Another builder reached out to me. Um, now it's a whole different revenue stream because now these designers and builders and landscape companies and painters, I can't tell you how many of them reach out to me right now because they're looking for content and how to get business. And what's the other revenue that they can get? And it's on social media. I mean, you look at a painter, what are you thinking? Well, like I can go shoot a room and you guys know you shoot a room and the, the color might be blue here, but the color palette is like, you know, baby blue and lime blue or whatever the hell. It, I get to ask that question all the time. What color is the wall? Listen, it, it's totally different if I shot it at one o'clock versus if I shot it at five o'clock, it's a different color. But painters are asking me, hey, can you shoot and give us photos and what's your rates? So there's another way of looking at it. For you, Brian, I would say, you're doing interior design work. You're going to be with a, let's say an architect, you're doing something for an architect. An architect has an Instagram account. Most of them, they want that content, show them the behind the scenes of I'm working with so-and-so this is the architect. This is what they've done. Show the behind the scenes of what you're doing and then show the finished product. There's your reel. Now they got, you know, you shooting it. They're going to tag you. What are they going to do? They're going to reshare it on their stories. Now who's following them? all of their other colleagues that are architects or interior designers are following them. Well, now they've just shared you as a photographer that are working for them. Guess what? Now you just have a new open revenue of how to get some new business from other architects. I'm telling you, that's kind of Instagram is one of those things. It's free advertising. You just got to be able to source it from all these different streams. So you're telling me I'm just making excuses. Pretty much. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, you, everyone's making excuses. When it comes to I don't have content, no, you just don't. You're not making the time to make the content. Okay, that's fair. Yes, that's really what it is. Or you know, either you're lazy, or you just don't have the time, or you have you don't have the desire. But the ones that you are the doing creativity, it. you know, the the motivation, yeah. it's yeah. it's there for you though, Brian. You've got we both have plenty of stuff to work off of, and I could do on every shoot. I could do. I could do something fun, something entertaining, uh, part of it of my shoot that is worthwhile for people to watch me, whatever I'm doing. And yeah. now I'm getting such great ideas how my agent then will tag it and, and we'll go from there. And other agents will go, well, I want to be successful like, like this agent. And so I'm going to, and then they go, well, I want that media per that photographer. That's this yeah. chain. This is circle. Exactly. Great. So Richard, exactly what you just said. So if I have realtors and that's how I grew my business, which was, we have a realtor that reshares our stuff and they're like, you know, they're working with Stallone Media. Now Stallone Media has a team of six people. They have a back end. They have somebody that takes care of all the uh, administrative stuff. Then they have somebody that takes care of FPV. They have somebody who takes care of, let's say, Twilights. But when they're resharing our content, their colleagues, their other agents are getting eyes on me. I'm getting free advertising from them people in their office. So the same thing will apply to architects. The same thing will apply to builders. Builders are going to reshare your stuff. More builders are going to get eyes on you. And that's what you're looking for. It's like yellow pages. Free. So you've inspired yeah. me. I'm going to take this podcast mm -hmm. episode and cut it up into a bunch of different reels. And then we have some content. We could have been doing this all along, Brian. We could have. <laughs> yeah, oh. you could have. <laughs> and guys, if you can't, there are just like there's photo editors in India or Vietnam or wherever okay. you can get video editors to do the same thing for you. Just give it to them and they'll call it the, cut the video. Hey, up we, for we you. don't, we don't edit this podcast. <laughs> give them something and say, Hey, make me some reels. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Good stuff, man. No, Rich, I, I mean, I see for you like a, literally a gold mine there, especially no as you're ramping up your YouTube channel because you're making these 20 minute videos and yeah. out of a 20 minute YouTube educational video, you literally could make 40, 50 different reels to post over the course of a month and a half. And that's for each video you make. Um, so yeah. I'm really excited about um, being in Mexico because I have a backdrop. I mean, it, even if I'm not shooting a house in Mexico, I'm in Mexico talking on the beach and it's like, hey, look, where's Rich today? And, uh, shooting, you know, he's, different he's things. Twilight different skies. You're going to be getting yeah. Twilight Skies on the beach with a, a beer in the left hand. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay. When can you start with windsurfing again, Rich? Oh, God. If I do. Um, if you know, you I do. came back with my knee replacement, came back and, and kiteboarded and do everything I wanted to do. But uh, shoulders, we're going to see. But I think it's going to be maybe six months I'm hoping possibly February, I'll be down in Mexico in February and and uh, get back to that. But it's such a dangerous sport that when something goes wrong, it could just completely yank me and, and oh, yeah, pull you right out. Yeah. So we'll see. I'm not I'm not rushing into it, but I'm stoked about it. I'm I'm got a bright future. So. All right, cool. So Matt, I got one last question for you because um, we're running low on time here. But before I do yeah. that, we're gonna. Give our final word from Photo Op, our last sponsor of the evening before we uh, sign off. Let's face it, editing sucks. It sucks time, it sucks money, and it sucks resources away from your business and your family. That's why Photo Up has changed the game. Photo Up allows you to work one-on-one -on -one with an experienced editor that is 100% dedicated to you and your business. Photographers with a Photo Up dedicated editor say their edits are good or amazing 98.6% of the time. They're able to deliver images to their clients faster, and they get editing as low as 50 cents per image. Really? As low as 50 cents an image? You heard that right. Editing as low as 50 cents per image. Ready to find your dedicated editor? Sign up for a free PhotoUp account at PhotoUp.net and send trial images to three different dedicated editors. That's right. Try three different editors absolutely free. Three for free. I like that. So today, when you're all done shooting spaces, head over to photoup.net and hit the sign up button or click the photo up logo on the shooting spaces website. And don't forget to tell them Rich and Brian sent you. Thank you to the guys at photo up. And so Matt, I have one, one last question for you. It's not really a question, but it's like, 
for people, even me where I'm at, and uh, you know, I guess a lot of real estate photographers are probably in similar places where I am as far as my Instagram. You know, you have a decent following, but you really don't use it to where you should. What what are what are my next steps? Um, is it more important for me to? I mean, obviously reels, I have to get on there and, and I mean, I guess I don't want to say stop posting regular image posts because I only do it once or, you know, once every week or two. So that doesn't matter anyway at this point, but, yeah. um, you know, what should my goal be? Should my goal be to start building a bigger following or does that not matter? Um, should my goal no. be just to come up with a consistent schedule, like to start ramping up and, and kind of build this and make it the network that you've made your, your social media, um, what, what's the first steps to get there and maybe like, a a couple of month process to kind of, um, get into a routine. So let me ask you a question out of the people that you're following besides photographers, what architects or what designers are you following? How many would you say? Um, I would say the majority of the people I'm following are photographers. Um, that's not going to get you business. Correct. Um, no, I happen to, you know, live on Long Island, which is a very small region. Um, yeah. you know, it's, it's two hours east to west. So you're not talking about a big yeah. area of space. And I would have to gather that I f probably follow a good 85 to 90% of the interior designers out here on the island um, that I know of. Okay. I mean, I'm sure there are a ton, you know, you know, older ones that aren't on social and stuff like that. But, yeah. um, you know, I do follow a good majority of them. And, you know, I, I interact with a lot of them. I'm, I'm, I'm on the board of my local IDS, which is Interior Design Society. So, okay. um, you know, I do interact with a lot of the designers out here. Um, but you interact with them through that committee, but not through Instagram. Uh, not so much. I mean, right. occasionally, you know, we comment on each other's posts, we DM each other, but, um, yeah. I am, I am one of the more expensive design photographers out here and I do mm -hmm. lose a lot of work. And I, and I know this, um, I lose mm -hmm. a lot of work as of my pricing and I'm, I'm comfortable with that. That's fine. Um, and I don't know, I don't know if me being more active on social is going to change that because my price is still my price. Um, but, but I get inquiries from a ton of designers out in this area, um, all the time, um, just doesn't always lead to work. And it's not, I don't think it's because my, my pitch is bad or I'm not selling them well. I think, you know, I'm just one of probably, probably the high, one of the highest priced, you know, design photographers on the Island here, if not the yeah. highest. So, so we, we are one of the highest priced real estate photography companies in our area. Um, you know, I've elevated a lot of other real estate companies in our air to raise their prices to get closer to us. So they're like, well, if he's getting it, why can't we get in? There's a lot of great photographers that are out there, but what am I doing? That's different than what they're doing. Of course, but, but, right now more content. but right now today, if I had 170,000 followers, no one would balk at my pricing and say, I want to work with him. No. So the because difference is because people don't, people think followers is, is value. Um, they do, but the key is I continue to provide content. So like I was saying, if I'm working with an interior designer, what am I giving them? What's the value that I'm giving them besides just good photos? I'm giving them behind the scene content. I'm giving who I'm working with. Yes, I do have a following. So in their minds that they're getting something out of that, but I'm giving them video content regardless. So for you, I would say, yeah, okay, let's say you're a highest priced, um, photographer that's out there, but you could very easily also provide behind the scenes. You can provide, you know, uh, a before and after of what they're shooting or a certain design and, and tag them. And I, like I said, they're going to reshare that content. They're going to advertise for you. That's what I keep stressing. If you can have an architect or a certain designer, that's really popular, really well known that's out there. They're going to keep basically republishing your stuff. It's free advertising for you, which means you're going to get other, um, designers you're going to get you might even get a homeowner like i've gotten homeowners contact me directly to be like i want you to come shoot our house it's not because i'm the best photographer out there i'm not there's a lot of great photographers out there but i do a hell of a lot better of marketing that property than what the other photographers are doing and that's why they want me out there so you no, know, there's, I, I there's there's truth to that i mean i've literally gotten hot you know i shoot for a designer who has i think like 90 95 000 followers and i've literally got yeah. hired because someone told me I saw you shoot for her. Um, I want yeah, you. Exactly. Exactly. So it's the same. So the more and more you do that, you know, the more you're going to get 
other other designers or other architects that are going to be like, I saw you shoot for so and so, I want you to you know shoot for me as well. So if you could multi, if you do, you know that it's saying if you you know put out a hundred posts and you get you know maybe one or two leads from it, that's great. Um, or one percent or two percent. I'm going to say one percent. If you get one percent out of a hundred posts that you sorry a hundred things that you put out there business-wise, that's great. Um, so the more and more you do it, the more that's going to lead up to getting some more business. So my suggestion for you and for anybody else listening is try to leverage when you're shooting for somebody to create free content so that it leads to, you know, few, uh, sorry, free advertising for yourself. Cause they're going to reshare it. They're going to say, you know, working with, or I put behind the scenes and I tag them, they're just going to put it on their story and they're going to reshare it. I, I think everybody and everybody should be doing that. I'm, I'm seeing it a lot more and more, which is good. Um, but in your neck of the woods for you, you want to focus on interior designers and architects and just keep resharing content. You're shooting, you're shooting every day. You're shooting every week. You should be able to put up five, six of these posts and, and get it out there. I guarantee you, you're going to get people in that industry reach out to you. And everyone who sees it, you know, wants to see a photo that's photos. Great. But you'd love to see, well, what happened when you were there? Be yeah. Part of that. You know, yeah. that's, and it's, you're only limited by your creativity as well, too. Just to yeah, guys, them, we, we have, a, a good niche. we have probably one terabyte of behind the scenes stuff footage. Cause sometimes I'll bring my 360 camera or my GoPro and I have it on me. I have like literally one terabyte of behind the scenes stuff. We just don't have the time to edit it, to get it out there. Um, but there's so much content that I've built up and built up so that when we're not busy, we're going to start pushing that stuff out there. Mm. Cool. Now, are there like one one last question to follow up? Like, are there like talking head to camera or just showing video? Are there? Does it matter? Just any content is content. Any content is content. You, I remember you, Brian. You showed some behind the scenes on how you edited uh, a photo. Yeah, I've done That's a few content. of those. Yeah. That's content. That's great. You know, you got that guy. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. He does some stuff for GGI now. Uh, Hubble or Hubble. Hi, hi, Bell. I don't forget his name. Um, but he started just basically, he put a camera down and he showed himself walking and showing what the image looks like with him behind the scenes and what the camera saw. Uh, the guy blew up. He's doing a, amazing work. And now DJI hired him to do some work as well. Right. It's just behind the scenes stuff. You can put a camera behind you, literally shooting in a time-lapse format, your whole interior design shoot, and just put that as a video that's out there. You don't Make even have note. to talk. You don't even have to talk. Literally just put behind the scenes time lapse of you work walking around the house and just stitch that all up and put a video out there. People love watching that stuff. GoPro. GoPro. <laughs> that's it. So I'm gonna bring my uh, I'm gonna bring my GoPro three that's sitting in a bucket on the side with me to my next shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't know if that will work. You better you better I have, get a, I have get a, a uh, you, have you heard of Brino? B R I N O. They make these yeah. old time lapse cameras. So I have one like from eight years ago that's like 720. But it's made yeah. for time lapse. Maybe I'll uh, bring that on my next shoot and uh, put up a 720 time lapse. Just get behind the scenes stuff, man. It's no, so simple. You're there. Sure. You're shooting it. Matthew, um, as always, um, for time here, I want to you know thank you and you know over the the last few years we've become good friends. And I know when I was in Toronto we hung out and uh, we you know we chat every every so often. So mm -hmm. thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing your knowledge and. I know you won't um, be speaking on our platform publicly anymore, but um, you know we still we still want to chat and keep in touch. So absolutely, yeah. thank you guys for having me again. I'm really really honored to uh, be with you guys and you know be part of this last show. I mean it's uh, it was a great ride. Uh, I love a lot of the podcasts. I've listened to them when I'm driving. So um, you know it's uh, it's a it's a, a sad day. No, no, it's, it's good. You guys did a fantastic job, but uh, you know, I wish you guys all the best in whatever that you're going to be doing moving forward. And again, thanks for having me on Brian and Rich. It's been great. You guys are great friends and yes, we'll continue to keep talking for sure. You know awesome. It. And Rich, and you'll see me when you come out to California. Yeah. Absolutely. You're going to be the first guy I call when I get up there. <laughs> Rich, we got two more okay. episodes. That's it, huh? Yeah, I've got two two good ideas though. I'm I'm really yeah, excited. They're going to be our yeah. fun final two Next episodes, two. November and yeah. December. So it's going to be uh, pretty fun. And we're always out there, and shooting spaces will still be there, you know, with all our content and everything. And then we could probably, hopefully, do some more webinars and things like that. Who knows, Matt? Maybe we'll do another webinar. We're but, gonna do um, another Twilight update. Yeah. You know what? It, it's very popular. So it is great. Okay.
And, uh, you know, thank you so much, Brian, for, uh, for this time. I'm, uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I made my podcast. I'm excited because I didn't know if I could make an hour sitting in a chair with my uh, shoulder, but I'm feeling good. And, uh, you know, can't wait till the next one. Do, right. we have a, uh, do we have a date on the, do, we don't have a date yet. So, have... so, uh, you changed the open, but you're, and you're about to change the close too. I thought you were going to come in with like, <laughs> go out there and choose some oh, spaces. No, no, we're just closed. Yeah. Just oh, I'm like, I'm like waiting here. Entry. I'm like, come on. Yeah. I'm like, you're just going all out today. You're calling audibles left and right. Uh, anyway. Okay. Let's just finish it up. What are you, you going to say, Brian? No, that's your job. Okay. I've never said it well, once thank you after all. six years. That's that's your job. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. If you keep talking, I can't do it. Okay. Thank you all for uh, <laughs> for joining us. This is uh, Matt Stallone, Brian Berkowitz, and Rich Baum saying, until we see you next time, go shoot some spaces. <laughs> <laughs>